Hello, I'm Elle. Welcome to my talk, Crossing the Finish Line, How to Train for and Achieve Your Goals in Security. Who am I? Again, I'm Elle. I'm an application security analyst. Formerly, I was a developer. Um, I'm a marathoner. I wanted to give this talk because it's a topic that I feel strongly about. I remember my first security conference. I was so excited and enthusiastic, but I was also completely overwhelmed. Even the beginner talks, I felt that I understood maybe a quarter of what they were saying. And I had a background in IT for years, so I I can't even imagine how difficult it would be for someone coming from a different area. Um, so I am giving the talk that I would have wanted to hear when I first got started. Where we are now is you are interested in security and you want to begin or to continue learning, but there is no one correct path or clear progression in security. Imposter syndrome, conflicting advice, gatekeeping, fear, uncertainty, and doubt can make it feel overwhelming, especially in the beginning. You may be wondering what what do you do first? Where do you begin? How do you how do you get started? And that is what we're going to discuss in this talk. To reach a goal, you train for it. First, choose your goal and create your training plan. Then do the work day by day, step by step. It doesn't matter if it's fast or slow progress. You just need to make continual, steady progress forward and just keep going until you reach your goal. Or since I'm using running analogies, until you cross the finish line. Why running analogies? Well, it's because running is what I know, but it could be anything. It could be learning to speak another language. It could be learning to play a musical instrument. It is choose your own adventure. Whatever helps you understand the concepts. When I, when I talk about myself running, I also want to explain that you may be imagining me leaping gracefully like a gazelle, and I also like to imagine me running like that, but the actuality, I think, is probably closer to if you imagine a horde of zombies and a woman staggering just ahead of them, that's probably more what I look like when I'm running. However, I've learned in distance running, it does not matter how slow you run as long as you just keep going. And when you reach your goal, they give you a medal just for finishing. So I believe that it's appropriate for for getting into security and studying as well, because again, it, it doesn't matter how quickly or how slowly you may reach your goals as long as you just keep going. Uh, running is familiar to most people. The concepts are easy to understand. There's nothing particularly complicated about it. Um, and again, as I said above, it's relevant because you just keep going. That's that's the key. You just keep doing it until you reach your goal. Let's get going. First thing to do, remember you can do this. Take a deep breath. You've got this. Second, remember that you're a beginner. Don't compare yourself to somebody who's giving a talk on the main stage at DEF CON because that would be like a beginning runner comparing yourself to an Olympic medalist in the marathon. You may be there someday, but not not yet at the beginning. Secondly, don't compare yourself. You may have heard four or five talks already today. 
by four or five different people, there's a reason that you didn't hear one person giving four or five talks. Sprinters and marathoners are almost never the same people. Don't expect yourself to know all things. And the third thing is Google is your friend. Almost anything that you need to know is available online. They can point you to all the resources that you need. So just break the questions down into as specific of a question as you can think of so to try to narrow it down and weed out the garbage. So first thing you do is create your plan, which begins with assessing where you are currently. Do you have any IT experience? Do you have any IT adjacent experience? There are many backgrounds that are suited nicely for particular areas of security, such as if you're currently in technical writing, electronics, marketing, project management, law, it can be an easier transition to particular areas. However, if you have no technical background at all, the world is your oyster. You can go into any area that seems interesting to you. And of course, regardless of your background, you can, you can do the same and go into any area of security that appeals to you. What areas are you currently interested in? There are many, many different areas in security that you might consider learning more about. Um, Red Team is offensive security professionals who focus on attacking systems and breaking into the defenses, while the blue team are those who maintain the defenses. And the purple team encourages the red and blue teams to work together to share insights and feedback to enhance the security posture. Application security focuses on, on software, on the applications, where network security is concerned with maintaining the integrity of the network. Cloud security is focusing on the security of cloud computing. Um, digital forensics would include recovery, investigation, and uh, analysis of material that is found in digital devices, or Internet of Things security or IoT security is would be security cameras, appliances. If you want to get into car hacking, this would be for you. Uh, critical infrastructure security is the security of the electricity grid, the traffic signals, hospitals, things like that. Next thing is to Consider any constraints that you may have, um, any factors that need to be taken into account when you're creating your plan. Um, how many hours per week can you devote on a longer term basis to reaching your goal? Do you have any, any dates in mind? Perhaps you're a student and you want to achieve a goal by the end of summer or by the end of the school year. Are you currently in IT or an IT adjacent field? If you're not, that certainly certainly will not stop you from reaching your goal, but it might mean that you sh might need a little bit more time in the beginning. Uh, finances. There are a ton of free or minimal cost resources. There are also some some things that you might want to accomplish for your goal that are are more expensive. Can you get your work to pay for them as training? Do you have any other financial resources that you can tap into? And finally, and I want to stress this, apply for scholarships, scholarships to cons, scholarships to training. Do not uh, remove yourself from consideration. Do not assume that you don't know enough. Do not assume that 
you're not the kind of person that they're looking for or that someone else needs it more you apply for them if you meet the criteria you let them be the ones to decide now you have taken the time to assess where you currently are and what areas of interest you may have and what limitations you may have and as you consider these things this is when the search engine use will come in handy because you this will help you to really narrow down some possible goals for example looking for free cloud security um, information so you should be getting ready to choose your race so this is certainly not an inclusive list of potential goals but just for some examples um, you might decide to get a certification um, a always an always popular beginner level certification is the CompTIA Security Plus because it's required for a fair number of entry-level security positions you might set a goal to do a number of online labs such as to maybe complete a try hack me learning path your goal might be to get a job or an internship um, an IT support tech or help desk position is always a good foundation to transition into security or you might want to get a security internship if this is your goal you would probably want to set benchmarks such as sending out x number of applications per week and networking with y number of people in the industry you might decide to take an online course or an in-person course um, such as sans cyber aces is an entry level course um, you might you might want to learn a new programming language any language would be useful bash python or powershell would all be ones that would be particularly helpful in security i do not recommend this is my personal opinion but i do not recommend a cybersecurity boot camp unless it's free because and again this is just my opinion the, some of the ones that I've seen are very expensive and there's so many free or very low cost resources that are available that again in my opinion the, if you devote the same amount of time to lower cost resources you would be you would be better off in the long run and when you're setting your goals remember to set smart goals specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound and if you're not familiar with them again you can google them but i won't spend time on them during this talk now it's time to just do it do not wait for the perfect time there will never be a perfect time just do it remember there is no right or wrong goal there is no one path into security everyone's path will be different the most important thing is to just choose a goal and get started on it you're not making a lifetime commitment you can change for the next goal if you decide once you reach this goal if you feel that another area might interest you more people in security change their areas of focus all of the time the time that you spend on achieving this goal will not be wasted think of a couch potato who begins running to become a sprinter and then they decide to change into a distance runner that training all all of the training that they did is still going to be a huge help and they will be so much further ahead than the person who was a couch potato for another six months i realize that a lot of people currently are in positions where 
it may be really difficult to, to get started. You may not have much access at all to resources. So some of the options, some things I wanted to point out, if you're near a public library, um, many libraries have internet access, including computer access. You can, you can access training courses. You can check out books. If you have internet access, at all. There are many, many YouTube videos that you can watch on cybersecurity issues. If you do not have a computer that you can or will use for trying to learn to attack, like for example, Hack the Box now has the virtual attack box pwn box, which can be used if you're concerned about, if, for example, if, you're, if your family shares one computer and you're concerned about installing different tools on it. Sometimes you can be gifted a hand-me-down computer from someone or a company, for example, if it's a bit older and they're upgrading, especially if it may be a Windows computer and it cannot support the next version of Windows. This could be a great time to install Linux on it. If you don't know anything about Linux, this is an even better time to learn about it because that is something that you will find very, very useful in security. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has some different things to help people, including three mobile games available on Android and iOS. Um, Defend the Crown, Network Collapse, and Hotel Hijinks. So if all you have is your phone, your smartphone, you could get started that way. Um, the Federal Training Virtual Environment is geared towards federal employees, but some of, their, some of the courses are available to the public, and some of the ones that I saw included coding, reverse engineering, cyber essentials, cloud security, and there are so many other options. So again, don't let where you are now stop you from getting started. And the, as, you, as you move along, you'll start to find more and more resources, and it will actually become easier and easier to find other things that will work with whatever your situation is. Next, what happens on the long run stays on the long run. So you need to find your support team, others working towards security goals. They don't have to be the same goals that yours are. They can be different ones as long as you all can help each other, encourage each other, support each other, um, many people in security are on Twitter. You can also follow some on LinkedIn and there's many, many Slack and Discord servers that are dedicated to security issues. So how to find them? Um, I recommend following the speakers and any others that you may meet or talk to. And as you start to follow people, you'll start to get more suggestions for other people to follow. Um, if somebody says something that you find concerning or just not interesting, just unfollow them. Um, but it's, it's a starting point. You can attend your local B-sides. If you have missed it or you are not in an area that you could easily get to it, usually they'll have a website with some kind of contact information ask them. I mean, most people are eager to help and they may have a Slack or Discord themselves or an email list. And then you could meet some local people. Another thing that you would want to consider is me joining an organization that has where you might be able to find people more similar to you. Um, some of the options with that are WESIS, Women in Cybersecurity, or WISP, Women in Security and Privacy, um, International Consortium of Minority Cybersecurity Professionals, International Order of Black Security Executives, 
Um, NeuroCyber is for neurodiverse individuals. QueerCon has local meetups. Um, there are some companies that have Slack and Discord servers. Uh, Trusted Sec has um, Discord and Slack, for example, and they can also tend to be to be more uh, less less wild west than some of the other ones as well. So that's also something to consider. Now you've set your goal. Now you have your plan ready and you are off. So putting on your shoes is the hardest part. If you're having an off day, you just don't feel like it. Try to commit to making at least some progress. If you had planned to work on that day, try, try, to, try to do at least something. For example, if you were planning on reading a chapter of a textbook, try to commit to reading half of the chapter. Or if you were gonna do labs for two hours, tell yourself that you're gonna do it for half an hour. Because a lot of times, once you get going, once once you start, you'll find that you want to keep going. Um, however, make sure that you schedule in rest days so that you don't get burned out. It's it's difficult to work nonstop seven days a week for an extended time period without it catching up with you. So try to be sure that you honor your rest days and actually rest, at least rest from security. And also having other interests is helps you to, to be more well-rounded. And trust your training, which means there, there will be other people who are trying to achieve the same thing that you are, but they're going about it a different way, and that's fine. For example, if you're studying for the Security Plus certification, there are multiple videos, tutorials, books that can be used for it. There's no there's no one right or wrong one. So if you as long as you feel that you're making progress with whatever you're using, don't change. Just continue ahead. If you run into someone else that just got theirs and said, "Oh, I used whatever it was." Don't it's not going to be helpful for you to repeatedly keep switching from one to the next. Just try as long as you feel that you're making progress. Now, of course, if you are really struggling with something, then that's different and you might want to consider reassessing the situation. But typically, as long as you're making progress, you'll just continue forward. Running will destroy your knees, you know. Next, gatekeepers and other people who will try to block or undermine your progress. They are not always who you think they might be, so be prepared for that. Unfortunately, sometimes they, they can be people who our friends or family and mean well, but for whatever reason are blocking your progress or slowing it. Um, so there's a few, a few ways to identify them as opposed to someone who really is trying to give constructive, helpful criticism. Um, the first one is, do they have any experience at all in the area that they're talking about? If not, it, as, as the saying goes, don't listen to criticism from somebody that you would not go to for advice. If they do have experience, is it relevant experience? Is it recent experience? Is it in the area that you're interested in getting into? Um, with the running analogy, you would not go to a marathoner to ask advice about sprinting. It's generally not going to be the most helpful advice. Um, does this person offer 
useful suggestions for alternative methods or do they just tell you that what you were currently doing is wrong and this is this is important because you you may actually be doing something that you know that could be improved i mean we can all improve but if you just are being told no no that's not no without some alternative option for like that's that's a great try that's a great start but have you considered this other method and the most important thing is after you talk to that person do you feel better about yourself or do you feel worse about yourself because the bottom line is regardless of how helpful their advice is or how relevant it might be or how well-meaning it they may be if you feel worse about yourself consistently worse about yourself in your situation after you talk to them this might be somebody that you don't want to talk with about your plans because it's you're it's going to be very difficult for you to keep going if you feel continuously discouraged over and over there are enough enough people out there who will be supportive and encouraging and the time that you spend with people who are not encouraging is time that could be spent with others who will be supportive of you you are doing great keep going so it's also really super helpful to have what i like to refer to as the spectators these are not people who are in your support group because they are people who are not in security they don't want to be in security but they do support you and it can be anyone from spouses friends family to the old man at the coffee shop that just every day you know gives you the thumbs up and asks how it's going it really is helpful um get back up when you fall down you you will have you will miss days there will be days that you were planning on working and learning things and you will miss them there will be concepts that you struggle with that seem impossible to understand there are things that will take much longer than you thought and that's okay that's fine it happens to everybody just shake it off just keep going keep trying to progress forward it's again that's fine don't don't let it throw you off of your plans however is that don't don't run if you're injured if you have or if you're having a major serious issue um if there's a serious illness if there's job loss if there's you know some other major serious thing comes up financial problems divorce um take a break or even consider pausing because it's not it's not going to help you to push through unless you're literally within a week or so of accomplishing your goal that's it's not going to be helpful to push through something like that it's better off you're better off at that time just taking the time off focusing on getting done what needs to get done or getting through what needs to be gotten through and returning when things are more settled and i i think the way that you can tell if it's the difference between something where it's a short-term issue or not the way i always try to judge it is you don't you don't make the decision rashly you don't really decide on a day that for example like you don't feel like i i don't feel like working on this today you kind of take a step back make that decision on a day that you had already planned to not work and and reassess at that point and see you know ask if it's something that you really can do or not or if you need to take a break it's only mile what so never look at the top of the hill which means 
Never think about how far away from your goal you are. Never think about how far you are from becoming CISO or a keynote speaker. Instead, think about how far you've already come from where you were when you started. Stay hydrated. Make sure that you're taking care of your physical health and your mental health. Um, proper nutrition, hydration, exercise, I know, sleep are necessary for long-term success. I can't. I've got a long run in the morning. So that's when you're feeling, you're feeling discouraged. Everybody else seems to be going out. You're at home by yourself studying, working on things. So when you feel discouraged, disappointed, feel that you're missing out while everyone else is not having fun, reach out to your support group or your cheerleaders. The nice thing about the internet is no matter what time of day or night it is, there are people online. Um, and also focus on, on how you'll feel when you reach your goal. Run the mile you're in means try to do the best you can on where you are right now, on what you're working on right now this week. If you struggled in the past couple of weeks with a concept and it took you three weeks to get something that you thought was gonna take three days, it's over. Don't dwell on it. It doesn't matter at this point. If you're concerned about two weeks from now when you have to study cryptography, <laughs> um, don't worry about that. Just try to focus on what you're working on right now. Run. I thought they said rum. This is one of my favorite slides. So be sure to schedule time for fun security activities and not just slogging along towards your goal. And this is especially important, I think, in the beginning, because honestly, I, I believe in the beginning it's it's tougher, right? I mean, it's 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 a lot tougher to run your first mile going from zero to one mile, I assure you it is much, much more difficult than it is to go from mile 19 to mile 20. And so you wanna you want have some fun activities in there to remind you of why you enjoy this. So some of my suggestions are, if you have a local B-sides or a local conference and can make it, I think that's a great thing, especially the B-sides, because they tend to be minimal cost, maybe $10, $15. Um, you'll meet other people. You'll attend some different talks. I think with the talks, it's excellent. If you're not already doing so, I think it's a great idea to sit in talks about which you know, a topic that you know nothing about. And honestly, even if you understand 10% of what they're talking about, it can really start to give you some different ways of looking at things and some different things, different thoughts of things to try. Um, capture the flags are always fun. There are all sorts of different places to have them. Companies have them. They're available online at the end of the year. There will be the SANS holiday hack. The try hack me advent of cyber will come out. Um, don't feel that you don't know enough to get started on those. I mean, again, this falls into the category of just do it. A lot of the CTFs I've seen, especially ones geared towards for beginners, if you know how to Google, you can usually get a couple of flags and that's how you learn. People love to help, you know, with the capture the flags, and you can meet like-minded people. I personally like lock picking and lock pick bypass, although I'm not very good at it. I find it very relaxing, um, probably because it's just a totally different thing. There are videos about lock, the lock pick bypass um, and 
lock picking also, of course, and you never know when you might need to shim open a pair of handcuffs, right? Soldering and badges. And again, something I'm not all that good at, but I really enjoy doing. I like trying to solder and the badges are awesome because they're pretty blinking badges. And the entire reason that I started running distances was I learned that you get really cool badges if you run far enough. So you can imagine how I feel about pretty blinking badges. Bling. Um, you could get a Raspberry Pi and do things with that. There are any number of side projects that you could work on. But again, it's just make sure it's something something fun. Whatever to you is fun may, you may not be at all in the area of security that you're interested in, but just enjoy it. Hitting the wall. So everything is fine. You've been going along great for weeks or even months and you're coming up on being done and all of a sudden, blam. You have zero motivation, zero enthusiasm, and you just, you just don't want to do it anymore. So remember, if it were easy, everyone would do it. You have the strength to do this. Dig deep, find it. You can do this. If you're close to the end and you can cut down or postpone other responsibilities um, for a few weeks, if, if it gives you, if it gives you that extra enthusiasm to move forward, does it matter if you don't do the dusting for a few weeks? Um, visualize yourself finishing. Picture the certification with your name on it, or imagine demonstrating the application that you wrote in the new language that you learned. Start counting down, like instead of saying, I've done 36 labs so far, say to yourself, I only have five more labs to do, I only have four more labs to do, or I only have three chapters left. And most important, just remember, dig deep. You can do this and just keep moving forward because you're almost there. What do they call the last person to finish a marathon? So your support group, you may have other people who are working towards the same goals as you and they may be finishing and you're not don't compare yourself to others who may have reached their goals faster than you or who make it who you feel make it seem like it's easy because remember the race is long in the end it's only with yourself just keep going you've got this you can do this and the answer to the question of what do they call the last person to finish a marathon is a marathoner congratulations you have reached your goal. So the first thing to do, of course, is to celebrate. You've earned it and you deserve it. Reward yourself and rest. Take some time to get caught up on things that may have gotten put to the side, other activities or hobbies, and, and just take a bit of a break. When you feel ready, Reflect on the lessons learned. What worked with your plan and what didn't? Did you, for example, find that doing labs in the evening after the kids went to bed 
didn't really work as well as you'd hoped because too often you found yourself watching TV instead and next time you might want to try doing it in the morning um, or what things did work well. What did you enjoy and what didn't you enjoy? If you were studying for a, a certification that was a very broad based one, did you find, for example, maybe you found application security fascinating, but maybe networking was not your thing at all. And after you consider these things and, and when you feel ready, set your next goal and repeat the process. When does someone become a runner? Every few months in runner forums, someone who is working their way through a couch potato to 5K training plan will ask when they will become a runner. What conditions must be met for them to be a runner? Do they need to be able to run a 5K? Do they need to be able to run a 10 minute mile? And the answer is the same. If you run, you're a runner. As the quote says, it doesn't matter how fast or how far, it doesn't matter if it's your first day or if you've been running for 20 years. And this is important, very important to remember because so many people say they want to get into security. They're hoping to get into security. But what does that mean, into security? There are people that you'll meet at cons that have jobs in security. There are people that you will meet who do not and have a job in security and do not want one. And to them, it's a hobby and some of them are outstanding. So the reason that I'm telling you this is because you're listening to this talk at this security conference, which means you already are in security. You've already begun. You're on your way already. And you have as much right to feel part of security as anyone else does. So, to sum up, remember, the steps of reaching your goals are to make a plan, to stick with a plan, focus on it, make consistent progress forward. It doesn't have to be fast, but it does need to be fairly consistent. And if you do that and stay focused, you will succeed. And I will see you at the finish line. So that is the end of my talk. Um, I hope that you found it useful. Um, I am do runaway loop on Twitter. Um, I don't tweet all that much, but feel free to follow me. And if there is one thing that I want you to take away from this, it's that you can do this. You can do this. And if you ever are feeling uncertain or unsure, please feel free to DM me and I will try to get back to you and and keep you going because that's that's how we all get through this is helping each other so thanks again